Another thing for our personal AI. On yesterday's show, I talked a little bit about the Wendy's surge pricing thing. And if you watched yesterday's show, you'll know all about it. Basically, what's happening is that Wendy's is pl playing with, and I'm not sure if this is fake news or not, playing with changing the prices of their food, depending on the type of day, depending on the type of demand there is. So if there's a lot of people in line, it might increase the prices because it knows there's more demand for their food. And I described revenue management and pricing uh, algorithms and things like that yesterday. And the big problem with that is, is that for the co company, it's great. The company is making money, they're being profitable, and they're pricing at the point where the consumer will be willing, willing to pay. But the problem is, is that we, as poor consumers, we don't have any way to do a good job to figure out, on our side, what to do about this pricing. We just see the price as it is. Someplace, sometimes we can look at guides that say, buy midweek, or buy this kind of flight, or buy this, or buy that, or, or go to this store, or whatever, or we have coupons, etc. We have to do all this in a manual fashion. And this is one of the things that I can foresee a per we need a personal AI for. And I've talked about personal AIs in the past. And if you recall, what I mean by personal AI is that right now, there's plenty of AIs out there. There's plenty of AI assistants out there. Google Assistant, Siri, Alexa. There's tons of, Google, uh, tons of assistants out there. But they all are attached to some large tech company. And when you ask this assistant to do something, you have to question, you have to wonder. And remember what I talked about last week with Socratic questioning? You have to question if the answer that you're getting is in your best interest. And despite the fact that Google said, don't be evil, and these companies say that we're not going to do anything with our personal information, sometimes you can't trust them, can you? So when you talk to your personal AI, or supposedly personal AI, your, your AI assistant, through Amazon, Apple, Google, or Facebook, or whoever, are you sure they're giving you the right information for what you need? That's why, from my perspective, it's very important that we start seeing, start working on, and if you're a startup founder, and if you're interested in doing this, I, I, I commend you, and this is something that we should, should do. Hey, come on my show. I want to hear from you if you're doing this. We need to create personal AIs. And this is just one aspect. There's so many things a personal AI can do. And what I mean by a personal AI is an AI that is not connected to any of these big tech companies. They're not connected to it in any way, shape, or form. It's not run by them. It's not funded by them. They don't have the data because the data is about us. It's a personal AI. It runs on our own devices. It runs on a Mac. It runs on a PC. It runs on your phone. Apparently, I have heard through friends of mine on X that there's probably enough computing power on a Mac to be able to run a large language model just like generative AI, just like ChatGPT, on your Mac. And we're probably really close to being enough to having enough computing power on our phones to be able to run a large language model on our phones, generative AI on our phones. So it's entirely possible that at some point soon, somebody somewhere will be able to create a, an AI, a personal AI, not connected to any of the large tech companies, which can work tirelessly on our behalf in order to help us in every situation and in, in, in most cases negotiate with the other AI. And I'll give you an example. Right? So this is the future. The future is we walk into a store. We walk into a store and we're wearing something like Apple's augmented reality goggles. And instead of an actual physical human salesperson, a virtual salesperson walks up to us and looks at us and says, can I help you? And what happens is this virtual salesperson is connected to an AI and the AI has already detected who walked in the store. And based on who's walked in the store, it can go through all of our personal history. So all of those Facebook photos that you've been putting up for the last 20, 30, 40 years, depending on when you walk into the store, it has access to. So it notices that you, when you were a child, 
spent a lot of time on a big fluffy green couch in your parents' house. So it knows that you have a, and you were a happy kid. You were smiling, you were laughing, and it knows you were having a great time on that big fluffy green couch. So it's not going to tell you, but it's going to point you in some direction to other couches in the store, and it will indicate the big fluffy green couch. And then as you walk up to the big fluffy green couch, you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, that, that, that couch is really cool. I really like the look at it. I don't know why I like the look at it. Intuitively, there's something about that couch I really like, but I don't know what it is. And it's because the AI in the store has already figured out that you had some happy times in your dark and distant past, which you may not remember, on that fluffy green couch. And this is the point where your personal AI pipe pipes in and says, that's very similar to the couch you had when you were a kid, wasn't it? Remember your dad bouncing you up on your knee, on his knee? on this couch and then you go oh yeah I remember now I remember that couch I remember something like that couch ah so what's happening here the AI the super powered AI with tons of big iron behind it is looking through your personal history to try and find something to get you to buy their product and if you didn't have your personal AI reminding you that they were using this tactic, and some people might say it's a dirty tactic, some people might not, to pull this memory out from your past and present it to you, if your personal AI hadn't been there to remind you of that and alert you to that fact, you might say to yourself, oh, okay, that looks really good. I'll buy it. I don't know what it is about this couch. I really like the feel of it. I, yeah, I, oh, I want this couch. I really want it now. So you see what I'm saying? We need a personal AI. And then of course, once you decide you do want to buy the couch, your personal AI and the store bot can negotiate in seconds to get the best price for you. So it has a price set based on these pricing algorithms to what the store wants to sell the couch for. But your pay personal AI also has pricing algorithms, and these pricing algorithms work on your behalf to get you the best price, the best term, the best deal. And when you have pit the two AIs together, only then can you get a fair fight, because right now it's us poor humans against these big iron AIs. So you see what I'm saying? This is the future of shopping. And this is not just the future of shopping. This is the future of all kinds of interactions. All of this big AI out there knows so much more about us than we do. And we'll forget it knows so much more about us that we've forgotten what it knows or what it knows about us and what we know about ourselves. So if we had our own personal AI to be on our side, at our backs, helping us out, that is what we desperately, desperately need. And that's one of the reasons why Elon Musk is suing Sam Altman. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future. Mm -hmm.